Welcome to the Hudson Show. Coming up, the biggest announcements from Disney at D23. Also, a controversial way to treat your acne. All that and more on the way next. It is the Hudson Show podcast from Radio U. Thanks for joining us. I am joined by a special friend of mine, Nene. Holy smoke. Holy <laughs> smoke. Holy smoke. Hey. Holy smoke. You hear from Nene a little later on. He joined me for a food fight. But the reason we didn't do this food fight earlier on is because you, after I went out of town, you went out of town mm-hmm. to go to Holy Smoke Festival. In Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, baby. It was so, incredible. First of all, is that your first Nashville experience? Have you ever been there before? I have driven through Nashville before probably about two times because I like to go see my family in Texas. And when I make that drive, it's a long ways. But I do patch through Nashville. This is the first time I've actually been in Nashville, like stayed in there in a hotel, gotten the chance to see the beautiful views, the sky. Skyline. Oh my goodness, it was beautiful. Was there? This is the impression I always get of Nashville. Obviously, like the country music scene, but I also uh, get the impression that there's a lot of like drunk bachelorette parties just running rampant through the streets. Did you experience any of that? Or? It is actually so funny you bring that up because I saw at least four or five. You know those like people throwing up in the streets? Or? Oh, not, not <laughs> people throwing up. No, 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 not that. But what I did see uh, is a lot of like bachelor and bachelorette parties, like on those like wagons and stuff. Oh, the but pedal, you would have the, to like pedal. Yep. And like you would have to pedal to make the like the actual wagon go. Uh-huh. I saw that all over the place. Oh my goodness. Everyone, probably two out of every five people was wearing cowboy hat and cowboy boots <laughs> exclusively. So the Nashville. Make, Dress code. Oh, yeah. It's the national dress code at that point. And, like, the thing is, is, like, what else, whatever they were actually wearing as clothes wouldn't even fit for wearing, like, a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. Uh But they would still wear the cowboy hat and cowboy boots. Man, I've seen that even not in Nashville. That's how far that trend has expanded. Um, That is such a crazy thing that, like, the drinking on a pedal, whatever that is called. I don't know. I don't know. Pedal What a combination. Like, you know what you should do while you're drinking? Ride a bicycle. I know that doesn't make sense to me. Dude, the dude that actually runs the pedal wagon doesn't even have to do anything. He's just sitting back while everyone else <laughs> is doing the work. He that's just has I'm, to steer. That's what I'm wondering, too. Like, how what percentage of people are actually pedaling on there? Um, Probably a lot of them, but they're probably not going very fast because they're <laughs> yeah. under the influence. Wait, how come you're allowed to, you're not allowed to drive a car while you're drinking, but bicycle with many other people also <laughs> drinking. You're, you're <laughs> Group think. They're thinking yeah. that if enough people are all together, uh-huh. at least they'll be able to make some one cohesive you thought. Put, you put enough, Yeah, that's right, you put enough drunk people together, It has. you have the intelligence of one At least sober one person. sober person. Uh, okay, enough about that. Tell me about actual Holy Smoke Festival. First of all, who did you see there? Oh my goodness, Hudson. What if our G was there? Hey. You had Miles Minute. You had, oh my God, KB, Andy Minnie. The list kept going on and on. I was so, I, I was just so blown away by how good the shows were, but how casual everything is. Because it's a festival. You like, everyone's supposed to have all their, their P's and Q's and their mm-hmm. I's dotted and crossed the T's and everything. But when we got there, we got there so early. And because we were a part of like the media team and everything, we didn't get to go backstage, but we were out when just all the other artists were just walking around because the the people that were actually going to the festival weren't inside yet. I dapped up Aaron Cole, just like hey. nothing. He's like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, thanks for being here. I unloaded Andy Minio's Tesla. Yes. Like what? Like how did it? So I'm going to go and put a camera back back into our rental car and I noticed Andy Mino walks out of a Tesla. I'm like, oh, that's Andy Mino. So I'm like, what's up, Andy? And he's like, what's up? And so as I'm walking back into the venue, I see he's like opened up the trunk of the Tesla and he's taking stuff out. And I'm like, let me, let me, let me try something real quick. So I walk up to him and I say, hey, Andy, do you need any help carrying stuff? And he's like, 
You know, man, actually, I kind of would. Can you take this extension cord and this giant treadmill, too, by the way? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm not going to tell Andy Minio no. <laughs> I can't carry your treadmill inside. Besides, I already asked. That treadmill was super, super heavy. I'm going to be honest with you guys. But Andy Minio needed help. So I rose to the occasion. That Teslas are bigger than I imagined. They could fit a hole. Was it a cyber truck? That it was not a cyber truck, but it's so funny you bring that up because Andy Minio at Holy Smoke Festival played and debuted a new song that's coming out here in a few weeks, and it's called Cyber Truck. Hey. I know, right? It's going to be incredible. If you follow us on socials at Radio U Official, we actually have the video of the audio being played at the festival. You can go there, and you can see it there. Yeah, so he may have, in a recent interview, pleaded the fifth about new music, but the evidence is mounting that he is guilty oh he is so guilty bro new music on the way yes uh andy minio is such a i've interviewed him a few times what a fun guy he is packers fan did you talk to him about that i did not talk to him about that however in 2016 let's go back eight years to the first time i saw andy minio in concert i still had the t-shirt from his uncomfortable tour too for this i got the chance to ask him one question and i knew he was a packer fan and i said why are you a Green Bay Packers fan? And you know what the reason he told me was? He Look, said growing up, he had no ties to Wisconsin or yeah, anything. Likewise. And so <laughs> he loves the Packers because when he was watching them on TV, he saw the fans wore cheese on their heads. And he said, that's the team I want to <laughs> root for. So I was like, all right, there you have it. That's why he likes the Green Bay Packers. And that may sound silly, but as somebody who has chosen all of their teams based off of similar reasoning, is it really sillier than just choosing the team that you like because they're the closest to you? Geography? Really? I was born in Dallas. How dare you mock the <laughs> Cowboys like that? Uh, all right. Any more memorable experiences you can sum up here in the Hudson Show podcast? Not in the next minute. I'm telling you, there it's is a podcast. So there's no time limit. Mu- there's no time limit. Well, people might stop listening, but I mean, you can talk as if long y'all as you willing want. to strap <laughs> up, guys. I've got so many more stories to talk about outside of helping Andy Minio unload a treadmill on his Tesla, which he did use for his set, by the way. And I was very happy. I was curious about that. Why it, and how? <laughs> so Why and how? There was a song. I think it was called Clouds that he played, like back from 2018. His EP in there. Anyways, he like was walking. Walking on the treadmill as the LED screen in the back had like a cloud over his head. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I'm like, I'm glad he used it. I would have been upset <laughs> if I carried that treadmill all the way. Yes. And he didn't even use it. But that was a <laughs> lot of fun. Guys, I'm telling you, I was so close to Andy Minio in the media pit. I could reach out and touch him. Reach out and touch him. So here was another cool thing. Graham, if you listen to his song that we play here on Radio U, Mm -hmm. he was just walking around the festival like it was nothing. Like this dude has like, I'm pretty sure he has a gold record too because he's helped produce so many other tracks. And so I walk up to him like, oh my goodness, that's Graham. I'm like, Graham, what's up? And he's like, what's up, man? He was so chill. He was so nice. He was so open. I asked him a few questions and stuff. It was super, super cool to get to hear like how he enjoys just making music. Like not even like producing, but like mm-hmm. just putting the music together. So that was really, really cool. Guys, if, his, um, his Instagram is so good too. Oh yeah. And he's I, just on there and he'll just prompt his wife or whatever, you know, give me mm-hmm. something and he'll make a song out of it. It's like, yeah. how do you do that? And I, how I asked does he him, do it? I asked him, I was like, how much do you love making the social media as opposed to making the content? And he says, if he could just make the music without having to promote it, he would do it. Like the social media <laughs> thing. He's not even That's a huge a, fan of doing he's it. He's doing that good on socials and his heart isn't even in it. Oh yeah. Like he, <laughs> like, he's like, I'm just... I just know it's a necessity to do that nowadays to promote the music. So that's why he does it. Otherwise, he would just like probably outsource it and ship Mm -hmm. it to someone else to make it for him. Or just, you know, live in a cabin all alone and make the music and not let anybody ever see you. Yeah, exactly. It was a guy. Guys, this was an incredible festival. Everyone was so cool. I got a picture with What Up RG. I got uh, guys. Oh my! I I don't. I can't even fit all the stories in. Like I'm probably gonna wind up sharing it all throughout the week here on weekdays with Nene. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Make sure you listen in with Nene every afternoon on Radio U and follow along on the Radio U socials because they'll post up all the highlights there. Mm-hmm. And my trip from Connecticut. I'll have some highlights posted too. 
Holy <laughs> smoke! <laughs> Holy <laughs> smoke! <laughs> it is the Hudson Show. If you watch any of the Olympics, they are now done. I'm going to miss them. A few more thoughts on that if you check out the latest episode of the Hudson Show podcast. But if you did watch any of the Olympics, or even if you didn't, you probably know the United States dominated this time. Sometimes the Summer Olympics, it can get a little dicey. Some other countries can jump up the medal count. And I didn't know this, but apparently if you were to watch the Olympics in other countries, uh, you might be thrown a little bit because when they show the medal count, the, the table of who's got the most medals, the United States for much of this Olympics wouldn't have been on the top because other countries sort by the gold medals, which makes sense. How many first place finishes do you have here in the U S we always tend to sort it by total medals uh, overall, which the United States was far and away the leader in that. But yesterday, it was a little bit of a question. Would the United States be able to get to the top of the gold medal board or was China going to beat them? The United States needed uh, gold medals in two of the very final events to be able to get to the top of the leaderboard uh, in gold medal count. One was women's basketball, clearly, like, obviously, if we didn't get the gold medal, that would be a big disappointment. The United States did. The other, women's omnium. And congratulations to Jennifer Valenti, who wound up winning the gold medal in women's omnium, which not only gave her the gold medal in the United States, that gold medal, but it gave the United States the most gold medals in this Olympics. Now, can I say this? And I don't want to be portrayed as anti-American because it's not that. I'm American citizen. I, I moved here from Canada. And so I'm very excited to be an American citizen. But can I say this? Doesn't it feel a little too easy? You know, like we dominated so, uh, so clearly at this Olympics. Like I was just watching, I was watching like track and field things. And unless it was one of the long distance track and field things, I was like, huh, there's the American. I guess they're going to win. You know, like it's just almost, it's too easy. And I'm the kind of guy that I like to support other countries at the Olympics too. Again, not because I'm not patriotic and I'm happy for each of the individual athletes that, that is able to accomplish winning a gold medal because I know as individuals, obviously that means very much to them. But at the same time, like I just think it probably means more to a country like if you're from, uh, I don't know, uh, Djibouti and you are in the contention for a medal, I feel like that just means more. J uh, women's Omnium, we don't even know what sport what equipment do you need for women's Omnium? Give me one thing. You don't even know what it is. We're like, yeah, U.S. And I, again, proud for that individual, for Jennifer Valenti, great for her. I just feel like I'm also happy to see other countries win. And I just feel like the U.S., it's getting, it's just getting too easy. Uh, but I guess that's not our fault. It's the rest of the world's. Y'all got to, you know, work a little harder. Work a little hard on these Olympic events. You got four years. You're coming to our turf. It's time for our Monday tradition, the box office breakdown. Did you get out to theaters this weekend and see something new? Did you revisit some old classics? Let me know. I'll tell you. Uh, the numbers show that what people are seeing still continues on to be Deadpool and Wolverine. That was number one at the box office for the third week, running another $54 million for Deadpool and Wolverine, which is uh, right up close to $500 million made in North America alone. That's incredibly solid. Very well done. Number two at the box office, a movie debuting. It ends with us. I'm looking it up here. I'm going to level with you. I had no idea what it was until I just saw it here on this list. It's apparently a, a romance type movie. It made a lot of money. $50 million. That'll do for a movie I've never even heard of. Number three, still Twisters. That made another $15 million. Now, this is sad. Number four, Borderlands. Uh, that one we talked about in the weekend watch list. Just absolutely excoriated by the critics. Um, and the audience wasn't too fond of it either, according to Rotten Tomatoes anyways. Um, the audience that saw it anyways, there wasn't many. It only made $8.8 .8 million in its opening weekend. Not good. No good for Kate Blanchett and Jack Black. And whoever else, Kevin Hart is in that movie. Number five, Despicable Me 4, inexplicably still in the top five, making another $8 million. That was darn near close to surpassing Borderlands. Uh, that's how bad Borderlands first week was. What did you see this weekend? Go ahead and let me know. Anxious to hear your reviews at 
Radio U. For me, I saw it's been a while since we've done this, so I've got a couple things. I watched on the plane in my trip back and forth to Connecticut, Beetlejuice, uh, since, you know, there's the new one coming out, and I had never seen the original Beetlejuice. Well, let me caveat that. I did observe it when I was a child. I didn't observe very much of it, though, because it scared me. Um, the part, and this is very early on from watching the full movie now, very early on in the movie, uh, the part where they're like dead in the closet, uh, freaked me out. And so I left at that point when my dad or whoever was watching it never saw the full movie. Um, I understand why I was scared by that as like, what, six, maybe years old. I was very young. Um, as an adult, Beetlejuice, not scary. Which leads me to my question, why it's so popular. I don't understand it. It's not scary. It's obviously not a dramatic movie. It's not particularly funny. It's not like it's humorless, but it's not like I was, you know, trying to, I was covering my mouth, trying to keep from laughing out loud while we were on the plane. Um, There was a few moments that that are chuckle worthy, but I really wouldn't consider it like a laugh out loud comedy. So I don't understand why this is the movie that after all this time, we're like, yeah, let's bring that one back. Everybody loves it so much. I mean, it's fine. I am not upset that I watched it. I guess it is quirky. It's it's goofy. It's charming. It's stylish. But is that enough to keep a movie going for 40 years? Apparently, I guess it is because they're bringing it back. And Michael Keaton is Beetlejuice. That is a good character. I thought Beetlejuice was just okay. It ends very abruptly, too. I did not realize. I was like, oh, this is what? The beginning of the third act? No, that was the movie. Um, the other thing I've watched recently, as after many recommendations, people telling me, you gotta watch Studio Geely movies, or however you say it. The anime stuff. Uh, so I watched Spirited Away. And after watching Spirited Away, I can say that I'm not upset I watched that either. I watched the entire movie, all two hours of it, have no idea what happened. None of it made any sense to me. Very abstract, which in a sense I appreciate, but in another sense... I was just confused, and uh, after watching the whole thing, again, not upset I watched it, but uh, is that the movie that's going to get me going? You know, next up, tonight, Mark Me Down, My Neighbor Totoro. I don't know about that. I don't think that that's where I'm at. Let me know what you've watched recently. 8772-RADIO-U. That's your box office breakdown on the Hudson Show. A new viral skincare trend that's making the rounds on TikTok is making... A tan even more essential as you get ready to head back to school. And no, it's not because having the same skin tone as a Teddy Graham is the ideal way to be. It's instead because some are claiming that getting a tan, spending time out in the sun is the best way to deal with acne. Many folks are taking to TikTok and showing how they are sitting out in the sun with their face exposed and maybe they get a tan on the rest of their body as a result. But most importantly, they're allowing the sun to burn off their acne, which may sound insane. But as someone who has had acne in the past and has the scars to prove it, uh, when you have acne, you're desperate. Uh, You'll do anything, including possibly sunburning your face just trying to keep it at bay. And here's what else is crazy, is that according to uh, skincare experts at Eucerin, they actually have found that there's some basis of truth in this uh, practice. They say that UV rays have an immunosuppressive and therefore anti-inflammatory effect. So spending time out in the sun, exposing your facial skin uh, and your acne to the UV rays actually could be beneficial. However... Um, there are downsides to it. First of all, the sun's rays can cause your skin to dry out, which would actually uh, have a reverse effect. And the other fact of it is, too, if you get uh, sunburned, you're making yourself all the more likely to get skin cancer one day. Plus, being sunburned just sucks. And on top of all of that, you really think it's going to look better if your face gets sunburned and then it's all uh, blistery and peely? Is that really better than acne? Listen, like I said, I've dealt with acne for my entire life, and I had very severe acne when I was in high school and, well, basically until very recently. And let me tell you that um, there are many other things holding you. If acne is the only thing holding you back, it's not that bad. 
Uh, but if you're like me, the acne is the least of your worries. It's everything else about you that's the problem. <laughs> Warning you right now that uh, starting next month, Disney is going to try to aggressively crack down on password sharing. This is something, obviously, that other streaming services have dabbled in, and Disney has claimed they were going to start doing. Uh, they've already apparently gotten this ball rolling in other countries, but they say September is the month when they're going to start stopping you from uh, sharing your Disney account, logging in outside of the main household, even though they haven't given a lot of details on that, and giving you instead the option to pay to add more users, more accounts um, to your main user. Um, Netflix has already done this. For me, it was mildly annoying um, because largely I just logged out. Of, like once Netflix was like, you can't log into this because someone else is paying for it. You're not in the household. I just logged down. You know what? I haven't missed it that much. But then again, there's still some certain devices I have that do have Netflix still logged in and they haven't stopped me from using those. So um, riddle me that. But for Disney, man, they I'm actually at a loss of what we're even watching on Disney anymore. Um, you know, they're still putting out Star Wars shows and Marvel stuff, but uh, we all largely agree, right, that it hasn't been very good lately. And then some people will say, well, you know, it's all the kids' movies. The kids, It's Bluey, Bluey and Snow White that the kids are watching. Now, you know what? I think we all need to take a, a little bit of a lesson, I mean, at least the parents, and go, are your kids really going to care that much if you watch Bluey on Disney Plus or if you watch the same clip of Bluey on YouTube over and over again? And that's a lot cheaper. Just saying. <laughs> Just love them or leave them on the Hudson Show. If you've ever got relationship issues that you need to sort out, we're here to help on the Hudson Show. Not just me, but uh, the rest of the Hudson Show audience as well. This is a situation. I like this one in a way because it's planning for the future. Somebody looking ahead. These are the conversations, the tough uh, decisions you have to make when you've been in a relationship for a while. If a gal says, my boyfriend and I have been dating for three years and we're facing a tough decision. He's incredibly sweet, my best friend, and supports me in every way. If you'd asked me earlier this year if I'd marry him, I'd have said yes without hesitation. But this summer, he studied abroad in Germany, which he loves so much. He now wants to live there permanently. While I understand why he'd want to move, Germany offers a great culture, walkable cities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The idea of being so far away from my family is hard for me to accept. I visited him there this summer, and while I enjoyed it, I just can't see it as my home. We've talked about it a lot, and I know we might have to break up. He still has two years of college left in the U.S., so he wouldn't move immediately, but now I'm torn. Should we break up now to avoid a more painful split later, or should we make the most of the time we have left together? Neither of us wants to hold the other back, but it's heartbreaking to think about letting go of such a deep love. A couple that's very happy together, but they have different futures in mind. What's the path forward here? 8772 radio U. Let me know your thoughts, your advice for today's love them or leave them situation. And hopefully we can get some good advice for this couple. Max getting in saying Germans are awesome. I lived there for four years and I wish I'd never left. I still keep in touch with a lot of my old friends and landlords uh, even after I left. He says, go for it. So saying to this gal, give Germany another shot. She says she visited she didn't, uh, you know, it wasn't like he was there for a long term time. Uh, Susanna says, and I like this. I say, don't break up over this. If all else is good, a lot can change in two years. We also heard from uh, Leo who says your happiness matters too. If the distance is going to be too much for you, it's okay to prioritize your happiness and be honest about your needs. I like that as well. 8772 Radio U. If you've got thoughts for today's love them or leave them. For me, I feel like this is like if I could put this in stock terms, I guess, buy, sell, hold on this relationship. This is a total hold. You've got two entire years to make up your minds on this one. So I would say definitely don't break up today over it because, you know, if he was just there this summer, his feelings towards Germany are still fresh. You give him through the holidays. Uh, another semester of school or whatever, 
and see where he stands. Maybe the uh, the love of being in Germany, maybe it will fade. If not, if he is even more into it when you ask him into the new year, then that might be a sign that it's just not going, that that's something that's not going to go away for him. And then maybe at that point, that's when you guys, if you get there, you go, all right, I guess it's not going to work. You still have, at that point, a year and a half, and you guys can be apart for a little while and then see if you love something, let it go, right? You break up for a while. I feel like, uh, I hate to say this, I feel like if you if you get to that point, you break up for after a little while, uh, one of at least one of the two of you is going to be ready to move on. But if not, if you go through all of that, you've still left yourself plenty of time to prepare Plenty of time to realize, hey, we need to be together no matter where it is, whether it is in Germany or here or whatever, and you figure it out from there. Um, basically, take your time on this one. Thoughts and feelings can change. Don't do to anything too uh, irrational or hasty. Time for another food fight. Nene with me. Nene, do you smell that? Actually, I don't think I can smell anything besides my own saliva oh, no. that you, I've put on this microphone right here. Do you have COVID? I d- d- no, oh, I don't think it. so. Um, I almost threw up this morning, that's though. That's been going around. I don't know why. You don't know why. I have no idea. You I feel can't great, smell, though. And you, and you might throw up. Yes, I, Those, I might throw up. I'm pretty sure that could be COVID. Yeah. Um, no, I was just saying there was a smell of fall in the air do you do you feel it i don't feel fall because cowboys football is not on yet oh come on but when it comes on game. then i'll feel I who watches preseason real fans okay sure fall I, is in the air and it's not just because there is football every weekend now it's also because well it's one of our food fight items today and i just got back from a trip to New uh-huh. England, to Connecticut, uh-huh. and what were one you of doing the, over there? the fa- I was visiting family and getting Aww. food, fi- getting items for food fights. Uh, uh, one of the fall traditions in New England mm-hmm. is what you're about to try. So there's two things on there. One is clearly a donut hole. That's what I want you to try okay. first. All right, I'm going to try this donut hole. It's, it's got a lot of cinnamon stuff on it too. It's like the cinnamon outside coating. Mm-hmm. Let's see what this tastes like. Yeah. I hope you. I really hope you're gonna like it. Although you can't like it too much because it's kind of only a New England thing. This is a. It's good, right? That's not bad. What, that, what's in it? That is an apple cider donut. It's, That's so it's, what that tastes. Li- it's literally like a okay. donut with apple cider okay. oh. used to make it. So that is. I got those. That's a tradition. Every time the harvest season rears its head. In the Northeast, they make apple cider donuts. The best, the real ones know you go to Lyman Orchards to get the best apple cider donuts. But these are from Stu Leonard's, which is a grocery store there. Stu? Uh, which I will have posted up on my TikTok because it's not just a grocery store. Stu? It's, it's, uh, it's an outing to go to Stu Leonard's. Okay, now let's try the other thing, which I have not had before. And it's not specific to Connecticut, but I also got it at Stu is Leonard's. Is that a pecan in the middle? Uh, no, no, not a pecan. Not it that better not be a pecan because you aware. know I ain't going to like no pecan. But this is, uh, this is a viral sensation. It's called a crookie. Have you ever seen the crookie? What? <laughs> a crookie? Is it crooked or something? Is that why? <laughs> a crooked cookie? So they call it a crookie? No, I don't love the name, but I kind of do like There's chocolate in this here. experience. There's definitely chocolate in here. The crookie is a croissant. With cookie dough. A oh, cookie dough croissant. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you took one bite. <laughs> Why did you? Oh, uh, like, no, and I told you what it was. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, you like it more. Yep, exactly. Isn't it good, though? That's actually yep. good. Mm-hmm. We like the crookie. I saw that at Stu Leonard's as well in their mm-hmm. bakery. Mm-hmm. They even had a sign that said, as seen on TikTok. And I'm like, that, I mean, croissant, cookie dough, how could that not be good? I love and how it it's ne- it's not even as seen on TV anymore. Like it's now <laughs> right. as seen on TikTok because that's what people watch. So. That's right. They literally have the TikTok like logo there, which I don't even know if you, or you're allowed to do that. I guess you are. Yeah, I don't think TikTok is out there searching for whoever <laughs> yeah. posts their picture Who's in a stop? store. So what is your, what is your assessment of the uh, New England snack around up here? I love apple cider, and I actually wasn't a huge fan of that. But mm, the maybe, crookie. Maybe, maybe if it was fresh. The crookie. These have both been sitting here because I was waiting for you to return from Holy Smoke. So these have both been sitting here. Um, 
and l- on the on my desk, and I've mm-hmm. eaten so many of those apple cider donuts. Have uh, they have they been smoking? <laughs> Are they smoky donuts? <laughs> That's the next step. Normally, when you're out hiking, you know you need to uh, be aware of the nature that surrounds you, particularly the animals that uh, the wild animals. You just don't know how they're going to act. But that's normally like, you know, bears, wolves, cougars, mountain lions, depending on where you are. But in Japan, there's one other animal you need to be aware of if you're hiking in Japan's northern Japan Alps. uh, Signs have been posted letting hikers know not only do they need to watch out for bears there, they also need to watch out for crows. Why are crows such an issue? Apparently the crows have gotten so accustomed to humans showing up and much like bears, uh, the crows attracted to the human snacks. Uh, So what will happen is people will literally walk out of convenience stores uh, smiling, holding a Slurpee and a hot dog, and the crows will swoop down and snatch it right out of your hands. First of all, Hitchcock would be proud. Second of all, uh, I have a solution. I have a solution to uh, keep the crows at bay. This is something that uh, I've used in the past, and that is when you're out hiking or what, just when any time you think somebody, uh, a human, crow, or otherwise, may be at risk of trying to steal your food, you have some decoy food. You have another kind of snack. Maybe you have a bag, a, a, a brown paper bag. Who knows what's in it? The crows don't. They assume it's something tasty, and so they swoop down. You're like, here, take this, and then uh, sprint away. Uh, having the good stuff, having the beef jerky and the funyun. You can chime in for this. You be the judge where in New York City, a man is suing the Museum of Ice Cream. Who knew that was a thing? After uh, last year, he jumped into their pool full of sprinkles, which is really, truly a ball pit, uh, and injured himself. He is now suing the, the museum for not putting up the proper signage. He got injured doing this, so he says they shouldn't have promoted this as an activity that people could do on their social media, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the the verdicts coming in, Joey says, totally on the guy. The museum should not have to pay anything. Thank you, Joey, for chiming in. Susanna says, his fault, but they also, as the museum, should have anticipated this and put warnings Everywhere, You know, uh, Susanna raises a good point that you can never underestimate the stupidity of people. You can never be too careful. When in doubt, put a sign out because you never know how dumb somebody may be. Now, for me, I was trying to think of this story. And here's how here's what I came to. If you told this story to your friends, if you were like, oh, you won't believe what happened. I went to the Museum of Ice Cream in New York City the other day, jumped in the jumped in the pool, the ball pit, injured my ankle. Are your friends going to go, wow, uh, they should have put up signs and they have signs? Or are they going to go, wow, you are an idiot? They're probably going to go, wow, you are an idiot. That's Joey. That's Joe. I guess it wasn't Joey. That's Jeremy. Jeremy for you. <laughs> Jumping in a ball pit of sprinkles. He's always doing stuff like this. I don't think the museum should have to pay, but it is true. Uh, yet again, you can never go wrong having more signs, but does that mean that you should get sued for not having a sign in this case? I'm not sh- not so sure about that. Uh, so the verdict is museum off the hook, but they are sentenced to posting a bunch of signs. It's that back to school time of year. Most students and teachers getting back into class here over the next couple of weeks, although some schools have already been in class for several days now. But I'll tell you, you show me a state that's already been in school for a week or two at this point, I'll show you a state I don't want to live in. Looking at you, Indiana. Uh, But one of the things about back to school is I feel that even if you know you don't really like school, I mean, you've gone for several years now. I think you know enough to know you're not a big fan, and yet you can trick yourself in at the beginning of the year to being excited about it because it feels new, it feels exciting, you haven't been doing as much at home lately, so you're like, yeah, back to school, going to see my friends again, whatever. And uh, school, though, like many things... The beginning of school, it's exciting. The start is fun. Then you get like a month into it and you'll be like, when's uh, Columbus Indigenous Peoples? When do we get another day off? When is uh, when is winter break? Counting down the days. The beginning is fun. The end is fun. The middle 
is kind of annoying. Uh, that is how life is, isn't it? The beginning of thing, baseball season. I love the beginning, opening day. Love the playoffs. The middle, it gets pretty repetitive, pretty monotonous. It's hard to wait. We are impatient, and we just seem to be getting more and more impatient as time goes on. And so that leads to the beginning of things being exciting. And then the longer the middle is, the harder it feels to wait for the end, which is always exciting as well. But in life, sometimes being impatient and not wanting to wait through the middle times in life can be what leads to some of our worst decisions because we just can't wait. I've got to get to the end quicker. And so we try to take shortcuts. But I want to tell you that when you have a relationship with God, one of the things he teaches you is to be patient. God will teach you how to wait through that annoying middle to wait for the uh, the culmination, the end of the good stuff that is coming because many of the best things in life are things that you have to wait for and they're worth waiting for. You just have to get there. God wants to help teach you patience for this school year and for so much else. If you're ready for that, say, hey, God, show me how to be a little more patient. Show me how to make it through the middle, the less exciting times so I can get to the fun times as well. If you want to know more, check out RadioU.com slash free gift. Disney just wrapped up their D23 Expo in California. Uh, lots of big Disney news was announced over the last several days at the Expo. If you missed it, here's some of the biggest stuff that uh, was announced, uh, including Disney, after years of being begged by fans, is going to be adding a villain's land to Disney World's Magic Kingdom in Orlando. Uh, according to Disney, it's going to be a place where happily ever after may feel like just a distant dream. Sounds kind of fun. I haven't been to Disney World in years, but if I ever go back, I hope I get to see Villains Land because that sounds like that could be a good time. They also obviously had a whole lot of movie news to announce. They uh, revealed a first look at the live action Lilo and Stitch, which is coming next year. We also have release dates for Frozen 3, which is coming in 2027. Uh, Zootopia 2, which is coming in November of next year. Tron Aries, which is coming in next year as well. Freakier Friday, a Freaky Friday sequel with Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. That's coming out next year. And, oh yeah, next December 19th, we get Avatar, Fire, and Ash. We're wondering, yes, that is a lot of sequels. A whole lot of sequels. Uh, but it wasn't all sequels. They also revealed a new trailer for a prequel, the Mufasa trailer, which actually, and I can't believe I'm saying this, looks kind of cool. Like, it's actually a story where I don't know what's going to happen and where I didn't already see a better version of it, uh, cartoon style. Although, you have to wonder how much cooler would Mufasa be if it was a cartoon like the original Lion King instead of computer animated. But, I digress. Hop in the group chat, let me know, would you ever do this? Would you ever go to a rage room? Because a new one is opening up. Uh, actually, it just opened not far from the Radio U studios, the very first rage room in town. They say that uh, the rage room, basically the idea is you go there, you rent out some space, and they even provide the items. You get to smash whatever you want, destroy whatever you want. It says uh, it's just $20 plus taxes and fees if you just want to go solo. And wreck some stuff for a little bit. They say it can be very therapeutic. You can do it on a first date. You can do it with your coworkers. Um, whatever you want to do. Um, and some of the items that they allow you to go ahead and break include wine, liquor, and beer bottles. I really have always wanted to smash a beer bottle over somebody's head. I guess they probably still won't allow you to do that. You can do keyboards, old cell phones, or if you want to pay a little more, Flat screen TVs, computer monitors, printers, if you want to recreate the scene from office space. And I can't say I'm not curious. It does sound like it would be fun. It would never not be fun to break stuff. When I worked at Panera, I got to take a lot of, like, one of my duties was taking stuff out to the dumpster, especially, like, when we remodeled. I got to take, got to get rid of a lot of the bigger stuff. I got to smash a toilet once. It was pretty fun. It's always fun. But I'm not sure about the therapeutic thing. I, and what I mean is, I just don't know, because you have to schedule ahead of time and whatever, how therapeutic is it going to be? You know, it's one thing 
for me to smash my own TV. Obviously, that has its consequences, but I just don't know if it's going to feel the same if some fool is dropping a 50 burger on me in Madden to pick up the phone and go, hello, Diane at the wrecking company. Yes. Book me a room for Saturday. Uh, I need to <laughs> say, give me your biggest flat screen TV. I'm going to need to smash it. I don't know if it's going to feel the same if you're not doing it in the moment. Thanks for listening to The Hudson Show. Please don't forget to rate and review the podcast.